missed it. Magic. I just hit record. M- missed so. the magic, Luke. <laughs> yep. This is your podcast. You drive it. All right. Well, uh, welcome back to the Hush Life podcast episode. I have no idea. Uh, I've been in the mountains of Wyoming for the last seven days, eight days. Yeah. And uh, we are currently driving down the mountain road filming this podcast. And uh, why don't everyone introduce themselves? First of all, we got to say we're in a Chevy Trail, boss. <laughs> Brought to you by Chevy. Not yes. a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But whoa, what is you that? Could be. What not, is that? A, not a bear. Luke, put the gun down. <laughs> That's a mm. Not a bear. I am uh, uh, Ben O'Brien, uh, the director of hunting, which is the silliest title ever uh, at Meat Eater. <laughs> and uh, I'm here with Casey, one of my dear, dear friends. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, David Draper here, editor in chief, Peterson's Hunting Magazine. Yes, people still do read magazines. So. <laughs> I'll put, for now. Pl- I'll put my plug in now. Subscribe to Peterson's well, Hunting Magazine. <laughs> that was good, David. That <laughs> Thank was you. great. Thanks. And uh, I am Luke Torkelson. I'm the Vice President of Sales, Marketing, and Product Development at Weatherby. Well, at least there's one responsible person in this yeah, job. Right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know, we're just having a good time. Yeah, so like I said earlier, to kind of set the scene, we had just got out of the backcountry of Wyoming. We uh, horsebacked in five miles. I always throw numbers around. Yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. sounds great. Well, we walked out this morning, so let's say it was ten. Ten. Yeah. We walked out. So a pretty close friend of mine, Luke's, uh, Mr. Ben Rogers, uh-huh. owner, operator of Stone Mountain Outfitters, runs a bear hunting camp up here. And uh, absolutely phenomenal camp. Top-notch camp. Yes, it is. Wonderful horses, which is the best part about a horse pack camp. Exactly. And shout out to Marit Rogers. Marit Rogers. For her cookies. <laughs> oh, Star of the show. Yes, for sure. But Ben has spent, Ben and his uh, hired hand Gabe spent a lot of time earlier this spring getting all that camp packed in. And uh, so last year, to step back a little bit, last year we came over to do this exact same hunt with the Weatherby crew. And um, unfortunately, we weren't able to pack back into Ben's camp because this unit is under a quota system, which means after eight sows get checked in out of this unit they close it down and they closed it down within i think five days five days yeah last year so we never got to experience that hunt um so what i want to talk about on this episode of the hush life podcast is maybe some expectations that we have going into a hunt because Mm -hmm. seven days ago we were driving up this exact same road that we were driving down currently and i'll tell you where my expectations were at you know uh, I know Ben fairly well, and we've talked a bunch in the last year about this camp and this hunt. And uh, basically, it was my expectations were that we we're going to pack in there, and we we're hopefully going to have enough time to kill five bears before the quota got closed down. And that's kind of what we were talking about driving in to this hunt. Was you know Tuesday probably be like be the last day we'll hunt because either the the quota will be shut down or else we'll be yeah. tagged out. So. Maybe Luke, you know Ben, you know about this camp. Yep. Talk about maybe some of your expectations going into this thing. Well, I, I, it's really kind of twofold for me because, um, you know, Ben's technically the host, but, you know, Weatherby kind of put this thing together a little bit. And um, so we're hopeful that we can do what you said, come in here, get some great content for you guys and for us too, for some new products that we're working on. And um, that was my, my, number one goal was just kind of the content aspect and no no hunting video is that great if you don't have some level of success so obviously i wanted all of all of us to be able to walk out of there with bears as as quickly as possible and ben rogers is um he's a known killer like that guy knows what's going on it's not it's not like we're just kind of willy-nilly walking around in the woods like he he put the work in and um and really puts the time in to make sure that his hunters have success so i I went in there like with really high hopes that we're gonna we're gonna come out of here with with four bears in this truck and the fifth bear was uh there's one other guest in camp tj awesome guy we met at at the trailhead shout out to tj um so yeah i was hopeful that the four of us would be recording this podcast with four bears in the in the back of your truck case yeah and i think i hate doing this and i kind of i i definitely fell victim to it and I did it because I've been on numerous hunts or fishing trips where you know 
somebody who's been on it, that hunt before or been in the area and was like, oh man, this is going to be killer. We've, you know, we've always done this or had this much success. And so you kind of build it up to that. And I, I feel like I might have done that uh, to Benny and to Draper a little bit. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, yeah, I mean, so much of the hunts, whenever I hear stuff like that, I always, in the back of my mind, I go, it's hunting. Yeah. You know, you, you you like to hear the confidence, you like to hear the excitement, you like to hear past experiences and stories, but you always know, if you've done this long enough, you know it's hunting. The weather could be bad, you know, in our case, just the bears weren't as, as active as I think we needed them to be to, to really have the hunt that we expected to have. But every time I get, I've been through enough where an outfitter sat me down and said, what do you want to do after you kill your moose or your deer? And I go, just just stop talking right there. Let's let's not, <laughs> let's not let's not let's not make any uh, prejudgments on how this is gonna go, you know, because you don't know how poor a hunter I am. I could miss <laughs> five moves. So, but I but it is you end up. What happens is you track to an expectation, right? You start with something and you either build up from there or down from there or you level out, right? Exactly. And so we were pretty high, you know. I was like land of the giants, land <laughs> of the giant sure. bears. The yeah. story of last year. Um, Adam Weatherby's son, Connor, shooting a 24-year-old uh, giant Sal. sow up here was ringing in, in my ears for sure uh, going up in there. Yeah, because last year uh, what happened was Ben took Adam and his son in the opening weekend and mm -hmm. uh, Connor had a tag. And Connor killed an absolute dinosaur of a bear the first night. and uh, he, But Ben had numerous baits out and had numerous trail cams out and he was he was showing me the pictures last year lots of great bears Just, yeah it was you know and he had cell phone video of him riding in on the trail and having bears on the trail yeah. like, so in my head i was like even last year i was like oh man this is gonna be great like you know we can sit baits or we could just go spot and stalk down the trail like yep. bears everywhere and uh for whatever reason, it, it was a little different this year, and it wasn't just us. It wasn't just our camp because we kept checking the quota every day, and like I said last year, they closed the, the quota down in five days. And this year, uh, we checked yesterday, so that had been day six of the season being open, and yeah. there's only one sow that has been checked in. Yeah, and there was other hunters that we could see from some of our glass spots that have been there since we were there, and they're still still, still hunting yep. as we go out. So it's not. Not as if we were, I think we probably had a, as good a hunt as anybody, you know, in terms of, of what was happening in that country. Oh, without a doubt. I think, so we ended up killing three bears, which is phenomenal. I've been in numerous bear camps with, you know, five to six guys hunting. And, like, I took my son Gage last year on a hunt very similar to this. And in uh, Idaho, we horsebacked in, and there were six hunters in camp. And it was actually a two-bear unit, so everyone was packing around two bear tags. And my son was the only one that ended up killing a bear. And uh, so three bears between five guys in a week is yeah. not bad. It's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I when like you're pretty really good. Yeah, when your expectation is perfect, <laughs> you have five. When your expectation is five for five, then you set yourself up for uh, everything but failure unless you get that five for five. Well, right. I think there's a difference, Casey, between hope and expectation. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I, I, I was hopeful that we were all going to fill our tags. I didn't necessarily expect that. Like, I, I like to go into any hunt expecting an adventure, but not necessarily yep. uh, a quote-unquote successful hunt. That's a great point. Yeah, and I think it but we probably should shout out that we weren't all hunting at the same time. Like, Ben was, or I mean, uh, Casey, you were filming Ben. Yeah. Luke was filming me, so it wasn't like five hunters yeah. on every day. So there was, like, you know, I think there was one time, but probably day two or three we hadn't killed a bear we were like man should we split up should we start you yeah. know yeah Conquer sitting divide. multiple spots yeah but i i was came into this thinking i so i literally have a print deadline today um the magazine's supposed to go to press i got to push back till monday so i kind of when luke called and said hey you know go on this bear hunt i had to kind of weigh it against my work calendar unfortunately and i thought oh you know he said yeah you know you got to kill a bear quick because the quota quote might close and so you, but there's big bears up there so i i had pretty high expectations coming in that we would be done and i think somebody like maybe when we were at dinner last friday or when we were packing in like yeah we, we might be out of here by tuesday yeah yep. and it, here it is friday we could have been so yeah we just weren't and and not just because of killing <laughs> bears but also the you know the quota i the think quota. we all were we're all rushing against the quota yeah i think that's a very valid point the difference between hope and expectations and uh for me like you know running a content company like we do 
Um, my hope is always that you go into a hunt like this and it's not like five dead bears in one day. Yeah. You always want to be out there, for me anyway, like I hope the video tells a story and that story is whatever it might end up being because you, you can't tell the story before it actually happens. Yeah. But I always want to go in as a, a content creator and film a few days and get get a cool storyline and then have some success. And you know, even though that we didn't kill five, five bears, we uh, had quite the experience. And I think the video is going to tell a great story about you know, going into a hunt with high hopes or high expectations, however you want to look at it. And at the end of the day, like Benny said earlier, hunting is just that. It's hunting. Yeah, yeah th that's true. And you have, you know, you talk about expectations. I put almost no expectations on the experience itself, right? Like, that's more immersive to me. I'm not going to be like, you know what I need is tall mountain peaks and beautiful vistas. I don't, I don't think about that. I think I'm going to experience that as it happens, right? I don't put expectations on you know, uh, who's going to be in camp with me and how fun it's going to be and, and how many games we're going to invent that will change the landscape <laughs> of competitive sports. Channel Pringle, Pringle, so, Pringle, Pringle Cone. Cone uh, which you'll hear about, I'm sure, in a minute. But I don't put expectations on things like that. But I do put expectations of one, no, two things. One, my performance, like what, how I can improve or can perform as an outdoorsman. And, many, and that goes from, you know, shooting to skinning to cooking to i'm trying to get better at that stuff you know all the time as a craft and then the other expectation is is you know what's this hunt going to be like in terms of game we're going to see right so those are the two expectations that i that i put on myself the rest of it is just you know luke's point's the best point you're just hopeful to have a great time you're hopeful to be with good people you set it up the best you can to, to have that be the outcome but the rest of it you just have to you know it's all content yeah, no. I, I think as hunters, sometimes we need to alter our measurement of success. I hate to get a little preachy here, but I don't think the measure of success has to be, you know, punching our tag or killing an animal. I think success is the whole experience, and we we need to think of it that way sometimes. Like, you know, we, when we started this podcast, like, hey, what were your expectations? Yeah, we we're going to kill a bunch of bears, and that's success. Well, if I wouldn't have killed the bear on this hunt, I would have had the most successful hunt in a long time because I. Got to hang out with you guys. I finally got to hang out with Casey and Ben and I have known each other for years and got finally got to hunt with him. And so, and I met TJ, who's a great dude in camp. Like that's the measure of success is the whole entire experience, not just mm -hmm. the, the end result of punching a tag. That's right. Well, I agree with that, and that's why I kind of wanted to talk about expectations on this podcast. How about we've had this idea of doing, and we probably should do is. I want to start doing two podcasts per hunt and do like a podcast <laughs> yeah, just like yeah. this, yeah. driving in, talking about what what we think is going to happen, and then what actually does happen because they're always most yeah. of the time very very different. But to your point, Draper, whatever you expect, the only thing we can really control is how we perform, like Benny was yeah. saying, and how much enjoyment we have. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, that's that's the success you take out of a hunt is wh how how much you enjoyed being at camp or being in the woods or wh whatever yeah. it might be in life right because life is very similar to hunting i always go into different parts of my life expecting certain things or hoping for certain things and very rarely it happens that way and and it's just how you come out of it you know yeah what you're gonna do yeah i mean i've spent a lot of time thinking about this and talking about this and podcasts and things and i really have come to believe that hunting to me hunting is a game of strategy right hunting is an immersive game between you and whatever you're pursuing and like that part of it is uh is what's the most compelling to me right if i was hunting just for food i would do it very differently i would have shot the first bear that we saw if i was hunting for conservation i would do it very differently if those are my primary motivations but the thing that really gets me, and if I was hunting just to be with people, I wouldn't go hunting. I'd go hang out with you guys in the woods, you know. <laughs> we just go camping. We just go camping. <laughs> and so I, I've come to believe, like, those things are all very parallel and important benefits to what we do. And we wouldn't do it without those things. The understanding that those things are baked into the experience. But ultimately, it's understanding, like, there is a game at foot here. You have to learn the animal, where it lives. Or, you know, in this case, have Ben Roger do a lot of that work for you. <laughs> and, or pay somebody to do that work for you. But then when you get in that strategy, in that game-like pursuit, you're sitting around thinking about, you're not thinking about emails, you're not thinking about work, you're not thinking about 
anything other than where's that bear where do i gotta be to, to be where that bear is and that to me is the ultimate trawl in hunting and the thing that i want to be good at um and so that's what i've come to to really believe that i hunt for the game and all those other things are baked into the game and i recognize that but those aren't really the reasons that i enjoy it when i'm out there you know it would suck if i played the game of hunting and went back and casey wasn't there to laugh about it with it would suck but the game i think is still the reason i show up and games have scores right yeah yeah you no know? so that's that's my spiel i think really what all you can expect is that the preparation that you put in whether that's a gear selection from like your rain gear or your rifle or your cartridge you expect that that uh performs to what you're you know why you got it or why you brought it in um i think there's importance in that but mm -hmm. after that i think it's all hope and I, I do i personally do expect an adventure i don't know what the adventure is going to be like and, and i don't necessarily care i just i want there to be an adventure and i think we i think we definitely had one yeah yeah without a doubt so diving into the hunt a little bit so we packed in you know last friday it's friday now opener was saturday the plan was for you know i was going to go out and film benny and uh luke was going to go out and film draper and uh in my head you know hoping that we would capture a lot of bear content because we started out sitting on baits mm -hmm. then had a handful of baits set up that he packed in earlier this spring and uh so we went and sat on a bait first night as well as Luke and Draper. We just walked out of camp a mile or so to ours, and they forced back in a couple miles to their bait. And uh, we didn't actually have any bear, bear action on our bait that first morning or first evening. I see a turkey, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> we were driving through some of the most pristine turkey landscape in can't, Wyoming. Can't help it. Anyway, we did end up spotting a sow, a real rough looking sow with a couple Labrador puppy sized yeah. cubs. <laughs> this We should describe this sow. She was, she was out of some kind of Game of Thrones thing. Like she, a dire sow? Yeah, dire sow. <laughs> she, she had, she was her, rubbed off on most of her hind end. And she was, I don't even know what color she was. I don't know how to describe it. Mocha? <laughs> Mocha. <laughs> well, That's probably the worst way to describe a bear's color. But she was just like a dirt color. And she had so skinny, maybe 80 pounds, really long legs. Her head was like, looked like it had been rounded off. And her snout was all scarred up. I was looking at it through this body scope. She was looking rough. And her two little black cubs are maybe only a foot and a half long each. I mean, they were extremely young newborn cubs yeah they were they were fresh and what was your guys' first night like Go ahead. Uh, so yeah oh that last saturday night we sat on a bait and we had a sow come in um and she was uh i was actually thinking about shooting her she was decent sized sow a little lanky didn't have a belly um but then as she was coming to the bait uh she had a end up did have an, a i wouldn't call it a cub maybe like a yearling or a weanling with her he's probably but he was two years old and he was far enough away from her that you could tell that he'd been, she's trying to kick him off. Like he wouldn't get too near her. Um, and he was sitting there once and he, she walked toward him and he ran into the woods. So a legal bear to take. And I kind of, it was one of those first night things like, oh man, is that a bear I should shoot on the first night? As it turns out, maybe I should have because it, it was a decent bear and, and would have made a fine trophy, but I decided to pass. Uh, we had another little small black bear come in that night as well. Um, but I mean, my expectations were pretty high still because like, okay, cool. First night we saw some bears, we saw some bear action, action. And we did see another bear up on the cliff, right? Luke? The legend on of cliff we did. bears. Saturday, 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 Saturday night was clear you know, the cliff bear. Kind of between bears coming into the bait you, you board's not quite the right word but you're just waiting right and i'm i'm not good at that i'm not a good tree anticipation stand man it's tough so i'm just glassing all over the place behind us there's this like just sheer cliff with a rock slide underneath it and i see this like dark spot on the rock slide and uh we we dubbed this dark spot cliff bear um it, it's uh, probably about a mile away and even with the even with decent glass, it was hard to really make out what was going on other than he looked like a, a barrel. Big, he looked yeah, like big a big bear. big bear. So yeah, I was I was pumped to see a big bear up there that we called Cliff Bear and uh, he's probably the smartest bear that ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. I'm, I'm going with that. So that was the first night, which, you know, everyone saw some bears. I think TJ was on another bait sitting with uh, 
with Ben and they had some bears come in. So, you know, we all get back to camp just after dark and uh, enjoying ourselves. Like I said before, Ben has spent a lot of time packing in an absolute phenomenal camp. Great food. Shout out to Ben's wife, Marie, pre-cooking all of our meals. Um, and it was just a really good time. And uh, the next day was kind of similar for us. I think we went and sat on uh, Camp Bait, which is, you know, oh, Camp Bait. A thousand yards from camp. Yeah. Because we had actually went and checked the stealth cam that Ben had put on it, and there were some bears hitting it. So we we're like, well, let's go get some, you know, go sit here and get some action, which yeah. we think there was a bear that tried to sneak in behind us. We were tight on the bait. We were 50 yards from the bait because that's really the only thing we could do. If we wanted to film the bear that we were, you know, trying to kill. We had to be pretty tight to the bait and you know that that comes with its disadvantages right it comes yeah. with the fact that i what we think happened is we, we sat there no bears but right around about 7 15 roughly there's a bunch of crash behind us and it, clearly something running and you can usually tell if it's an ungulate it's got hooves like you can usually tell uh, an elk stomping through the timber and the difference between an elk and a bear it sounded like a bear and you know, the thought is that Bear just probably walked right up in behind us, spotted us, and because he was directly upwind of us. Um, but to that point, because we didn't put eyes on that bear, we sat that whole night and didn't see one. Um, and that bear was, or that bait itself was 43 years old. It's been there for 43 years. That bait site had been that's been a registered bait site state for of 43 years. Yeah, 43 years. Which is pretty cool to think about. Like, how many cool experiences have people had in the past at that exact bait site we were at? Exactly. You know, it's, it's fun to think about how, where we were and, and how cool the history of that spot probably is in terms of bears seen, bears killed, whatever. But, yeah, we were two nights in and we hadn't seen a bear um, on the bait, which is, you know, kind of, it's, it's the idea of, of sitting and staring at buckets all night. So, um we knew it was slow, but it, you, you know these other guys were seeing bears, so it wasn't like desperation just yet there on day two. Yeah, TJ's seeing some uh, some smaller smaller sows, and um, but he was seeing bears pretty much every night, I think. And so, and we we saw we did we ever get skunked fully? Mm, except for no, the second night we saw that little cake sized black bear, yeah, the little that's right. little short fat guy. Yep. Uh, and at six fifty three or seven o'clock we saw a cliff bear Legend right on time. Of cliff so bear. Cliff, bear. Night, night cliff, cliff bear reappears on the cliff. So you guys we we're had under the under assumption that Cliff Bear was pretty punctual. We patterned him. Seven seven PM he makes his showing on the cliff. And so on day three, I think we said well, if he's on the cliff at 7, we better be on that cliff at 7. So instead of sitting bait, we did a little spot and stalk and climbed up a chute. It wasn't a bad, not as bad a climb as we thought it was going to be. Um, we kind of had an idea in our head where he was coming out. Turns out our idea was probably not exact. We ended up being a little bit left of where he probably was. We did hear a bunch of rocks clatter up on the cliff at 6.53. Yeah. Again, punctual. And, uh, and then some crashing through the woods. Oh. We called it about but 7.30, decided to run yeah. back to the bait because he didn't show up at his usual time. We so. were so optimistic hiking up there that we're just going to, like, uh, we're going to surprise Cliff Bear. We're, hey, we're here for you. <laughs> and uh, What would you say? You were hiding behind the couch in yeah. his living room? Yeah. <laughs> so, I like that. Uh, the problem was once we actually got up to that rock slide, the, the access or the visibility from the tree line to just straight up exposed rocks was non-existent yeah, pretty much so no place to hang out other than like one little tree that we got behind that was like 50 yards from where we thought he might be we just have to get lucky yeah i mean my shot was gonna be 50 yards or five yards when he came from behind a tree it was <laughs> but but he what didn't show so we bombed down the mountain uh got back to our bait with maybe well we got back to the trail above our bait kind of sat down and decided to glass the bait from the trail which was a 500 yards some 500 yards away and who shows up we're pretty sure it was Cliff Bear. Cliff Bear was at the bait. Yeah. We, we yeah, potentially a with a pushed red him spot. down yeah. the mountain. And uh, so we, I think we had 20 minutes at that time. We decided the 500-yard shot was a little long with that uh, incline. Just wasn't quite ready for it. So bombed down the hill. Got a tree between us and ran down a vertical, grassy, sage-covered hill. And uh, got to 400 yards with nine minutes left. Got set up on him. Um, I asked uh, Luke for the dope on the on the cartridge and uh, dialed her in. Cliff Bear uh, walked out of the 
scene and then back into the scene for a second and I was just getting my crosshairs settled on him when he walked behind a tree and uh, Luke says nine minutes till legal shooting lights over. We got plenty of time. He's plenty gonna, of time. Step out <laughs> any second. The only tree on this hillside, which should be said, so there's nowhere this bear can go and be safe from uh, from my Weatherby rifle. But apparently behind the tree he was safe because he stayed there for nine well, minutes. Well, that's why I say Cliff Bear is the smartest, the smartest bear that ever bear lived. Ever. Yeah. And we sat there, you know, after legal shooting light just to watch, just to see if he would come out, and he didn't until dark, and we finally had to leave. Like he he. I, I think he really built a tunnel from the bait all the way back <laughs> yeah. into the cliff. Yeah. I would assume after this podcast airs, there's going to be people writing songs about Cliff Bear. Cliff the Bear. clan of the Cliff Bear. When we got to the truck, I said, you know, we forgot something. Ah, Cliff Bear. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot Cliff Bear. We should. He was supposed to come with he us. He was supposed to come. He was supposed to come. He did not day show up. Day three, everyone's having some action. Day three, we, cut, we kind of changed up, me and Benny and, and Ben. We did a little spot stock. And when I say spot stock, we went on a death hike. Well, in the morning... I was a little, oh yeah, being a little, I had a little gumption to go, you know, because you don't normally go to the bait until about three, you know, yeah, something like that. Bears are usually hunted in the spring in the evening in time. In the evening time. That's very, it's every camp I've been in, it's very similar to that. But I was like, well, there's a there's a spot where I can go glass across uh, a really good looking uh, valley, and, and there's a big ridge with a big face on it that I can glass, and I can also sit and look at the bait, the first, the bait that we saw. The silent cubs the first night, so I go hiking up there after breakfast at about nine o'clock. I get up there about nine thirty. I crest the little ridge and I poke my head up, and there at the bait is a cinnamon-colored bear. I was as surprised as anybody. I threw my pack down, got my rifle off my pack, ran over there really quick, threw my rifle down just in time to get the crosshairs on its front shoulder and to wait for this bear to turn its head so I could see what it was. I didn't know, it was looking down in the timber below the bait. And I thought, well, maybe this is a sow with cubs. I'm not sure what kind of bear this is, if it's a bear I want to shoot or not. All I got to do though is see the head. It's a pretty nice sized body. It was as big as, you know, about three buckets, which is usually pretty good. So all that bear had to do was turn and look and it never did and scampered off into the timber. And I sat there till noon and then, then uh, went back and hooked up a Casey. Yep, we did a little spot stock. We actually did get up, get on a bear. Kind of the same thing. The bear a couple hundred yards off the trail. Uh, we got down on him, got the camera rolling, and uh, just wasn't a big enough bear. Yeah. It, one Sorry. of the things you look at is like, you know, obviously their belly, their gait. There's a lot of things you can look at. Head size, a lot of things you can look at on a bear to judge size. It is a inexact science if there ever was one. But ears is also a good indicator because it's really relative to head size so smaller ears bigger head it's all you know more maturity this this particular bear he was healthy had a great coat he looked beautiful his ears were like eight inches long he looked like mickey mouse <laughs> <laughs> so i thought it's part jackrabbit yeah i was like yeah i don't think pretty Even, good indicator that he's probably a younger bear yeah he was a younger bear and um thought about it but ben and i ben rogers and i decided no that's not that's not the bear we want yeah so day three was pretty slow. You guys saw Cliff Bear, had another bear. So this is day four. I'm blown away because one, we haven't killed a bear in camp yet. Yeah. And two, our hopes have been destroyed. Hopes were destroyed. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Remember but, we were talking about leaving on yeah, Tuesday? Yeah, we were supposed to be packing out of here out. with a bunch of dead bears. <laughs> Not only that, we checked the quota that morning, and only one sow had been checked in. So we're we're good on our time. Right? And, and we went in with one sow checked in, and I believe that sow was killed during the archery portion of the season. Okay. So effectively, none none sows. No sows had been checked <laughs> in sows. at this point. So we knew we still had some time. Yeah. I'm not saying that uh, camp was at a low, but we were all wondering, maybe. There's a rooster on rooster. the road. Oh, flush, yeah. flush. There's and a, a hen on the other side. Wildlife heaven. I oh, know. Wow. So day four. I, I love Nebraska. And this is a funny <laughs> thing about like hunting, <laughs> for me anyways. Like, okay, after you, you have a, a few days, a handful of days with, with uh, not a lot of action, you're like, all right, what can I do better? Like, how can I go about this in a better way? Do I need to be smarter about this? Do I need to wake up earlier? Do I need to go back in further? But when you're sitting on baits, for the most part, like what do you, what can you do? Sit harder. <laughs> I, I mean, tried no. that. I tried sitting longer. Me and Benny, it. It didn't work. day four, were like, we just should just go there because you know we could kill a bear at camp because there's obviously bears that have been in camp. Yeah. But 
we're probably not going to kill one unless we're out, either on a bait. So, what time did we hike up that to that bait site? You know, it was we saw I saw that bear the day before on that same bait. This has been our third day at that that bait, and to this point, we had, I only seen that one bear. We saw him about 9:30, so we started calling him 9:30 bear. So I said, you know, let's get up there around about the time 9:30 bear would be hanging out. So we it was like maybe 10:30 roughly, a little bit before 10:30 that we got up to that bait. Yeah, and where the bait is positioned. We were about 180 yards away from the actual bait, but we're sitting up on this pretty bare ridge with one five-foot-tall pine tree. Mm. Bear ridge. Got and it. we've experienced a lot of different bear. weather on this hunt, from <laughs> hot days to snow to rain to fog. But this day was It was hot. a scorcher. <laughs> there was not a, there was a, maybe two clouds in the sky all day, and it was just hot. Like 81 degrees in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. and we sat there and sat there and sat there until 9 o'clock. So it would have been, you know, 11 hours, give or, give or take. And uh, no action for me and Benny. And we were a little discouraged, I think. We got back to camp. Yeah. No one was there. I think we started listening to some uh, depressing country music. Yeah, I put on a little sad, kind of twang, <laughs> twangy country music. We were talking about kind of love, people we've loved and lost. We were talking about how it was just nice to be with, you know, hanging out and ca how fun camp was we were it was kind of like writing the eulogy yeah. or the ugoogly of the hunt <laughs> as it were four, four days into the hunt it's already dead yeah we yeah, were yeah, we were writing the funny thing eulogy. Yeah. hunters do and when, when you know they're not finding the success they hope for and they start making statements like man it's just been a real good time hanging out like that's yes. why they call it hunting yep that's why they Every, call it hunting yeah. everybody has like the colloquialism like ah, well hunting ain't killing you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but and my dad always used to say Deer live in the woods, and I thought, yeah, I'm sure do, old, old <laughs> bastard. But he's right. They do. He wasn't lying. But apparently bears don't. Yeah, yeah bears, bears don't. don't. So we're kind of in that place. If, if you guys are listening at home and have been there, that's where me and Ben were at. Yeah, our well, brains had been baked by the sun. We just we were a little loopy. Still enjoying ourselves. We didn't have a bad day at all. It's a good thing that you guys were not very good, you Googleizers, because <laughs> uh, we strolled into camp. Yeah, so we're, uh, I think we were in charge of dinner that night, maybe, and uh, maybe we were doing some dinner, I can't remember, but we were... I think we did, yeah, I think we chili did chili dog. dogs. That was chili dog night. Chili, chili dog, dog night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then we hear the horses coming, and uh, things took a turn for the better. Yeah, those horses had some bear hides on them. Yeah, that's a couple uh, bear hides hanging over one of the pack horses. Who was the did we ever get the pack horse's name? Oh man, my, the no. poor pack horse. Pack horse. I just called it pack, pack horse. horse yeah. yeah, that's kind of. The, we'll just name him Packy. Sad part of being a pack horse. You don't even get a name. Packy the pack horse. Packy the pack horse. That's a pretty uh, good name. So we we're sitting. Um, well, yeah, we decided night. we decided we may have boogered up Cliff Baird. He would not be on the cliff, so we decided to sit the bait again. Yep. And uh, not too long in the well, I mean, then we get to the bait like three thirty four. Uh, I think seven. 30-ish, a bear walks into the scene and it's well, a good bear. Six, well, six, six o'clock, we uh, hear a gunshot. Oh, that's right. Six o'clock-ish, we hear we hear a gunshot, which is With, TJ. Yeah, TJ's hunting about a mile past us. They drop us off and then hike another mile to the other bait, So, or a little. Uh, everything for Ben Rogers is a mile. About a mile. Yeah. About and, a mile. About and a mile. That, was, that was a big like spirit uplifter. Like Even if only TJ killed a bear, we're not skunked anymore. Yeah. It, TJ had never killed a bear before. He was pumped just to... New like, hunter. Only been hunting for three years. Yeah, like, he was... You could just feel it, the excitement oozing from TJ. So, like, I was pumped in that moment. And yeah. then also, bears are moving around today. Yeah, we thought... With the, well, that is true. Because we heard the shot and we're like, oh, that means bears are moving. So, maybe a bear will show up here. And I was really expecting the, the short, fat uh, black bear to show up. Because he was fairly regular. Um, and... But at 7 o'clock, something happened before... Yeah, bear showed yeah. Up. Cliff Bear showed up right at seven o'clock on the cliff. On the cliff, not on the bait. Just and so it it gave us a different perspective after having been up there the day before. We're like, you know what? We I think we kind of misjudged where we thought Cliff Bear was coming out by maybe a couple hundred yards, but on that cliff, it that was substantial. We couldn't. Yeah, he we, was like we, almost like a, over another lip we, of the ridge. We or wouldn't something. have yeah. been able to see him because of just the contour of the of the rock slide. So. I'm like we're making mental notes like all right if we if we make another play on Cliff Bear we can go this way and make it happen. But we couldn't I mean it was seven o'clock we couldn't have done it that night. I no, mean, like, it was too late to make it happen yeah. to that night. So we thought, you know, if we don't get a bear tonight, Cliff Bear will be in his bedroom tomorrow. Be in his on bedroom. Day five. Yeah. So but and at so, seven 
30, another bear walks in. Yeah, a, a new bear we had not seen yet walks out. Good. I spotted it over to our right. Yep, good bear. And you were on my right, and I'm the shooter, so we couldn't really take him on the hillside as he walked down. Um, and he kind of went out of sight for a second, so it's that, you know, the highs and the lows. Like, oh, here comes a bear. Oh, no, he's not. He's leaving. Because a lot of these bears weren't coming to the bait. They would come by the bait. They'd walk into the scene and out, but they wouldn't go to the tree. They wouldn't hang out long. So this bear kind of disappeared. I couldn't see him behind this one tree. And then he finally comes down the hill and thinking, okay, perfect. Yardage is good. I know where to hold. Just need to, you know, need him to position himself perfectly. Well, what does he do? He he uh, must be Cliff Bear's like son, son of Cliff Bear, <laughs> son of Cliff Bear. The legend of the Cliff because Bear's son. I think Cliff Bear said to him, "When you go out into this spot, in this bait spot, what you got to do is go behind this tree and just stay there." Because the cut did on the first night too. Now that you say that, that bears like that behind the tree spot. I don't uh, know what's back there. If they, he was trying to open the tunnel to up to the cliff, <laughs> to go up to see the cliff bear. But he hung out there. I went back and, and watched the footage. It felt like he was there for a really long time. It was just under a minute, like fifty something seconds. He was behind the tree, which is a really long time in bear sighting. Yeah, in sighting it feels like yeah. no. So, but he comes out from behind the tree, um, and I give him the the wallop. He gives it. He pauses to take some care of some business and. Um, he took a, a nap, fell down the sleep, which yeah. is cool because part of this hunt was uh, you guys trying out some new, new cool toys. Weatherby's going to be launching here soon, right? That's right. Yeah, Draper was kind earlier when he said, uh, you know, Luke was trying to give me the dope on the rifle. Well, the the reason that he didn't already have it is because it is a brand new cartridge, and I just have it in my phone, and yep. so. Yeah, stay tuned for that. But, yeah, which will uh, be coming out it, soon. It, we can't tell you about it this time, but it, it did well on that bear because he didn't did go work. anywhere. It, he, it did work. He, he died right away, and the only reason he went anywhere is because he was on a vertical slope and he rolled about 10 feet and luckily caught on a tree or we would probably still be chasing him down that steep hill. So, yeah, I think there was a cliff at the end of that one too, yeah. so that, that would have been real rough. Yeah, so uh, he hung up in that tree dead. We heard the death moan within seconds. So, so day four, we had some success. Two bears. Two bears coming into camp. Two bears. You guys are, you know, and, and that's the whole finishing that's, your you you googly. Yep. And that, <laughs> yeah. the, that's it was what like, I love about it was a party, camps, man. You is you know we're we're hunting we're you know even though we're split up, we're a group, right? And your guys' successes were our successes, and that really changed everything for us. For me, anyway, I was just like, man, we, this is happening. We're gonna kill some bears, and. Yeah. You know, TJ got to kill his first bear, which was super cool. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I said this earlier. That was, that was refreshing to have a new hunter in camp, a guy that, you know, got to experience this. You know, you only get one first bear, obviously. And he was just as excited as, you know, a 12 year old kid would have been. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I don't want to sound jaded. I mean, it's like my sixth or seventh bear, and I was excited, so don't make it sound like I wasn't, but it was hard to compete with TJ. Yeah, like, he just <laughs> nonstop. No, he was like, so I felt like I needed to be shouting. Well, so. for perspective, he was like that with everything. Yeah, everything was like, amazing. Awesome. Everything is amazing. We were walking awesome. out today in the snow, and he was like, this is amazing. I finally had to ask him. I said, is anything not awesome in your life? And he goes, I haven't found it yet. Yeah. Everything is like, awesome. Love it. He loves it. <laughs> so day five rolls around, and uh, so that means Luke's up to bat. Luke's got a tag. Draper's going to fil film Luke. Yep. And um, I, I decided I was going to go aggressively after Cliff Bear. Like we we tried, not not we weren't exactly passive on our attempt the the two nights before on Cliff Bear, but now we've seen him three times, heard him a fourth time yep. at seven o'clock essentially. So the plan is to get in Cliff Bear's living room, and that's where I was talking about hiding. We're gonna hide behind his couch, and when he walks out by the TV, we're gonna just jump out and get him. Surprise! That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> We got to the bedroom. We we hung on a cliff, hung by our fingernails on a cliff edge for a couple hours. His bedroom or his living room is not like any other living room. It is uh, a ridiculously steep rock slide that you cannot get to quietly. It, it we made such a racket. We we're doing so good. I was actually thinking, as we we're getting to like the final ascent, like we've done good. Like we've been quiet. This has been awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then we got onto this loose shale rock and the. the the quiet was over. Yeah. yeah. Then it was just like, let's pretend we're a giant herd of elk and trample through this shell. <laughs> yeah. So then it just became, well, we're making noise. Let's just make as much noise in as little time as possible. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we tried to hide. And, you know, we heard we heard a, 
We heard a rock tumble yeah. right, right about seven. Seven o'clock, I heard two, I swear there, whoom, whoom, footsteps, and then a giant rock dislodged above our head as Cliff Bear tried to kill us by throwing a rock. Yeah, it, it was, <laughs> and it's a bigger rock than like a little chipmunk or something could dislodge, I would think, but, um, but that, yeah. was, that was it for Cliff Bear. That's where the tale of Cliff Bear ends, I think. Well, well. yeah, and then to, to kind of insult to injury was for Cliff Bear is that then, uh, as this was happening on the side of this cliff, we are watching an absolute uh, downpour of a, oh. of a storm cloud build and yeah. and pour in. It's starting the lightning. We're here thumber thun, thumber. That's a word. Thumber thumber thumber. Uh, the thumber. That, that rabbit, that the, thumber. the thumber is rolling, and uh, we're getting a little nervous because it was hard to get up when that cliff was dry. And we're thinking if it really starts to rain, we're just going to have to call it. And that happened. So we, we poured off about 15 minutes earlier than we had originally planned to, headed to the bait when nothing happened there. Yeah, so I think we went into day five, like, we sat on baits, I think, upwards of 23 plus hours. We were into t closer to 24 hours. 24 yeah. hours, did a six mile hike. I think the conversation was like, man, maybe we're just like taking this a little too serious. It's bad juju. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we had we had seen the night before, you know, then we're deciding, okay, we got our bait up in the ridge we've been talking about, oh, the old bear ridge. That's not no working out. No bear ridge. No, the no bear ridge. Yeah. That's not been working out. We're going to go ahead and toss that aside. You're, uh, you're over 20 hours on bear ridge. Yeah, bear ridge is just not going to pay off. Although my stubborn Irish nature, this is like, I'm going to go sit up there until a damn bear comes. <laughs> but no, <laughs> we were smarter than that because we, uh, Ben... Rogers had a trail camera on the camp bait. Camp bait. And we hadn't been there for a couple of days. It hadn't had seen a lot of uh, activity. We went and checked the, that bait, and there was a a bear there, a nice mature boar with a white patch on. I think he already had the name Patches. Did we give it to him? We gave it to him. We gave him the name Patches. Patches. We heard a story about Patches, but I think it's important for everyone to know that Ben Rogers was on a bait. You know, a couple, a couple weeks miles before. from this bait. Yeah, miles from where we were, miles from camp, a couple of weeks prior, and this same bear comes in. He was in. watching the bait that Draper and I were, had been sitting yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. This same bear comes in, Patches comes in, and a coyote is also at the bait. The coyote challenges Patches, Patches murks that coyote, kills him, kills him, and buries him right there at the bait. <laughs> Which is, I mean, we were, we asked the question, like, what's the coolest thing you've ever, or craziest thing you've ever seen in the wood? Mr. Ben Rogers has spent his, some time in the mountains yeah. of Wyoming. Yes, he He is. grew up in this country. He's been riding his horses all around this country for years. And the dude gets after it. But what he brought up was one of the coolest things he's ever seen was that bear killing that coyote. Yeah, just killed it. And so that's the bear we're hunting. So now we, we have him at about 7.30, was it, or 6.30 at the bait the day before when the we were before. sitting up on no bear ridge for 10 hours baking in the sun there was miserable the, a nice bear right by camp um hanging out so we decided bear in hand that's a smart thing to do we've already got a really cool setup 50 yards from the bait we could sneak in there go in light take no i just took rifles ammo rangefinder binos that's it like we're gonna go in there and, and my uh spartan bipod like we're gonna go in there, light, fast, set up, be quick, and 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 just get serious about this. And uh, we went in, sat down at 4:33 because I was taking a video of my phone of our little setup. 4:33 is the time we sat down, which is a little bit later. To Casey's point, we were like, "Hey, let's not overdo this. Let's go in when we know is gonna be, you know, prime, prime time. time." Yeah, exactly. So we we saunter down the hill. We sit down, we get set up. Casey sets up a couple GoPros and his camera. I get my rifle set up on a, leaning against uh, a broken limb on the tree in front of me. So the pine tree in front of me. So I'm stable, he's ready. And it's not, I'm gonna give it 10 minutes, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, when I start hearing some sticks breaking in, on the ridge in front of us. Now, to describe where we are, if you imagine, if you folded a piece of paper, we're at the bottom of that fold. The left side of the piece of paper is just all blow down. So this, these bears are hanging out all day, and basically a bear, you know, a ridge that just has blow down timber on it, snaking their way through this blow down timber, getting down to this bait. Well, up in that blow down, I hear we hear a couple cracks here and there, which you hear from time to time. It was a little bit windy that night, so I didn't think anything of it. But the next, you know, next stick 
that we heard break, there was a little breathing that went along with that. It was like, <laughs> so I thought, oh, we may finally have a bear. But at this point, you've, I've stared at this country for 22 hours trying to manifest a black bear. bear. Trying to make a black bear just show itself. Trying to like look, is that a black bear? Nope, it's not. Nope, it's not. Nope, it's not. Until the moment at like probably a little bit before five when uh, Patches sticks his head out and me and Casey both went, oh, big bear, big bear, big bear. He's probably 100 yards roughly when he poked his head out. And he starts kind of doing a serpentine pattern through all this down timber to get to the bait. And at this point, I'm set up. I'm steady as could be. Casey's got the camera on. We're ready to go. Poke your head out. Let's go. Well, <laughs> he uh, there was one little set of trees and a bucket behind it that had some bait in it. Well, of course he goes right to that bucket, right? Yeah. Right to that damn thing. And he was behind there for how long, Case? I don't even know. He, he, once again, it always feels like it's forever, but it might have been a couple minutes. Yeah, a couple minutes he's behind there. He's rattling the bucket around. He's eating. He's doing his thing. I can see his the shape and outline of his body. I've seen him coming in enough to know. I saw the white patch. I'm pretty sure it's patches. Um, I don't think we had seen or heard of another bear that had a white patch. So it, so that characteristic helps a lot in, the, in judging this bear. And so the best part of the whole thing was when he turns to leave. At this point, I have a window of, of maybe three, four yards to shoot him before he's gone. All right, he's gonna turn from the bait, go back up the hill, and I've gotta shoot him as he's, leave, as he's leaving. So he turns to leave with a piece of beaver in his mouth. He starts to kind of trot over the first little log, and he trips over the bucket, trips over the second bucket that's laying there, trips over the bucket, hits the freaking, runs into a tree, and kind of stumbles, and at that point I've got a clear shot. I take it, and he's done. Yeah, you made a heck of a shot on him. But what's crazy about all that is, you know, you sit there for 24 hours, like you said, manifest, trying to manifest a bear onto the bait. And what we always say, if you guys watch the channel long enough, hunting it literally comes down to something changing in a matter of second, right? And that's exactly what happened. We'd sat on baits for hours on, on end, and then we go and sit there for 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, oh, yep, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah, you feel, yeah, we were saying before, you feel like you're paying into something. Yeah. You're investing in, in this bear, right? Even though it's not there yet, you're, every minute you sit there is time invested into the ultimate. You've got to go through some, some, like some tough slot days machine. to have the great day. Yeah, right? so, yeah we were saying like, quarters in that yeah, slot machine. Quarters in that slot machine. machine. <laughs> every minute you're like, put another quarter in, pull it, put another pull it, until that pull becomes jackpot. the thing you were at, the jackpot you were looking for. And so we had just sat 10 hours the day before, and we, it was like, 28 minutes and we shot this bear you know it was quick it felt like it was it, it played out in slow motion but it was quick but you know like we were talking about earlier it comes down to you know what can you do better and it's just you have to be out there right you have to yep. be out there if it's hiking or glassing or sitting in a bait you have to be out there for these things to happen and yeah. that's just that's how it went down man and it, yeah. it typically does go down that way yeah uh, colonel tom kelly wrote in his book the tenth legion you know, you have to pay for every turkey you kill, and the coin you use to pay for it is time. Time. And that's that's kind of what we did. We just had to keep going, and we had no choice. You know, we weren't going to sit in camp and sulk all day. Uh, <laughs> and we knew there were bears around, so yep. you just keep on going. So that's kind of the, the whole, the gist of, a, uh, of the bear hunt that we just experienced. And um, we appreciate you guys listening to our experiences on the audio tunes if you want to watch the uh visual hunt it is on the channel now go check it out uh you know go light on me I was, this is the first time i've done in a long time where i was the camera guy yeah big shout wait. out to luke who is also i got to play camera, camera guy, guy. Yeah. i have to officially apologize to logie bear because yep. i kind of took his i kind of kicked logie out and uh brought your brother benny he was just trying to call me, so he's probably wanting a, an update. But um, big Sorry, shout out to Weatherby for putting this on, yeah. Luke. Yeah, uh, thank you, Luke. Yeah, you bet, guys. Thanks, was, Weatherby. Uh, uh, thank you guys for coming. That was uh, we got an adventure. That's we, what we're, we that's did. what I was looking for, and we made it happen. We got we. I got a great great footage. I think of uh, of Draper shooting his bear. You got awesome footage, Casey, of Ben shooting his. 
Uh, I got some really good pics and some other footage and stuff for uh, some of our future uses for Weatherby. So I think Perfect. that was a successful trip. Any last words, thoughts, opinions, feelings from anybody? Man, I'll tell you, uh, we were in a very special place. Now, we don't want to hotspot that place. We want to tell anybody where it was because people are going to get after us. But I, um, from, from being in camp that had been established 43 years before, to just the, the uniqueness of the, the country, to the abundance of effing game animals that are there, bull elk, moose, Deer, deer, coyotes, turkeys, turkeys goblin. Yeah, turkeys goblin in the mountains. At 7,000 so cool. feet. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't wouldn't imagine. To me, it, just the place will, you know, the camp itself. We'll have to leave uh, Pringle Cone for another podcast, yeah. but that also is <laughs> memorable. Draper? Uh, yeah, I just think, you know, after the, the tough year we've all had, you know, with COVID and the lockdown, I had several hunts canceled last year and last fall, and and it was just good. I was so excited to get to a backcountry camp, unplug for a while, get away from the craziness of the world. We had no service. We had to hike about a mile uphill, and I hate hiking uphill, so I did check in a couple times. But for the most part, we stayed away from the world for a week, and it was amazing. And I don't know, man. It just uh, I, I sound like TJ. It was just awesome. So yep. it was a great time, and I appreciate everybody, and I appreciate hanging out with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as you, Draper. I, with COVID and everything going on this past year, our typical show season was didn't exist. So I, I've been uh, kind of a, a business traveler uh, for a lot of years. And this is the first time really in the, in the last year I didn't go anywhere. And um, you, it is a weird feeling. Like I'm so grateful and so happy to be home with my family. Um, but then you kind of get past when show season happens you're like oh man what about my what about my buddy over here or or my friend at this company and, yeah. and this sales rep and you're like i kind of just miss my people and then then you're just kind of get not really stir crazy but just i i'm a person that that craves adventure if if i don't check that box like mentally i just kind of i start to break down and so my wife knows that about me and is so awesome that she'll let me you know take more than my fair share of adventures uh, every year and so it, to me it just really felt good to uh to, to check out kind of like you draper to just kind of mentally check out for a week but still actually kind of be working it was awesome <laughs> yeah my take big takeaway is you know you've heard it said a hundred times but if you want to get to know somebody or, or understand if it's a, somebody you can get along with go and spend four five six days in the backcountry with somebody and I just want to tell you all, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with you guys, getting to know all you guys better. You know, I've known Benny and, and Luke for a while, and uh, Draper was absolutely awesome spending time with you in the woods, Thanks, getting to know you, man. It was great. But uh, hey, everyone at home, we appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate the support. And as you know, Weatherby has been a partner of ours for a long time, and uh, we have a Hush Vanguard Weatherby that Weatherby sells on their website. Go check it out. We offer it in five different calibers. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to use my 300 Weatherby this hunt, but it has performed flawlessly for, for me for the last year. Well, so, and, and here's a pro tip for you, Casey. We don't go back ordered on guns, and you know the market's crazy right now. However, on the Hush rifle, we do go back ordered on it. So, order it, and you get in line, and and we're we're about a 90 to 120 day turnaround on those right now, which so. is really good at this time in the market so the, the market's nuts yep all right guys well thanks again uh for listening to this episode of the hush life podcast and uh we will see you next time